So here, what if you have a distributed axial load, right? Does this look like a distributed load to you? Um, it's, look at the units, it's 30 kilonewtons per meter, right? 30 kilonewtons per meter. So if I were to cut it right here, right, if I were to cut it right here, I only have a short bit of that distributed load that I have to counteract right here, correct? Uh, but if I were to cut it right here, I would have to counteract 30 kilonewtons per meter times whatever length that is. So this one would be larger. You know, if, if I were to cut it right here, then that in, that internal normal force would have to counteract that distributed load. And that distributed load is, it's got a, a good bit of that distributed load. So let us define this as X right here. I don't know if you can see this right here, uh, but the N would be equal to 30X, right? Here's the, you know, magnitude of the distributed load. And so if I take the magnitude of the distributed load times the length, that you remember in statics how you handle these types of distributed loads, right? I take the height times the base, it's kind of what we're doing here. The height is 30 kilonewtons per meter. And so I just take the base as this X is going right here. So anyway, the internal, think about that. Maybe I'll leave it with that. The internal N is 30 X. If I'm defining X from here to there, so our delta L would be the integral of this P over EA as X goes from zero to L. Uh, so that was a uniform distributed load. Maybe the homework, I'll give you one where if it's, a, if it's increasing linearly, then it might be something like 30 X squared. Um, you know, is the, the, is the internal normal force that we're going to use for our P in the PL over EA. Look forward to the clock. Okay, so anyway, 30, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still 30X and those units are newtons. When I take the 30 newton over millimeters and I multiply it times the X is millimeters, then I'm, I'm in newtons. All right, and so my E, is 73 100 MPA and my area did it tell me yeah a diameter so pi by 4 diameter squared I, I don't know I, I just fall back to MPA newtons and millimeters squared so my E is an MPA my force is in newtons my um, uh, area is in millimeters squared in order for this to be in newtons, though, that x is going from 0 to 900, right? dx. Okay, okay. All right, so my delta L is, I'm going to go ahead and bring the 73, 100, bring the pi by 4, 20, maybe even bring the 30 out. 30 over 73, 100, pi by 4, 20 squared. Uh, and so I'm really just integrating x. What's the integral of x? x squared over 2. As x goes from 0 to 900. All right, All right. So, so plug in 900. And I would get that the delta L, 0.529 millimeters. That's a change in length of that whole rod, the whole 900 millimeters changes in length. So what is its new length? 900.529 millimeters. Okay. All right, but anyway, delta L, PL over EA, or maybe FL over EA. You can remember that. Flea, flea, whatever. It's on the formula sheet, though, which I need to give y'all. 
someone email me, I'll post it and give you all the formula sheet for the next few tests so that you can uh, be comfortable with that formula sheet. But anyway, delta L in the elastic region only. I really should have checked to make sure my force doesn't go above the yield, uh, make sure the stress doesn't go above the yield stress. Uh, but in the elastic region, delta L, FL over EA.